Hmm. Gonna need the right key for that. It fits perfectly. But nothing's happening. The thing's either busted or there's something missing. Valentina. Yes. The room in which Mordred crossed over into me. Do you know anything about it? What kind of room was it? A kind of ritual chamber. Skulls everywhere, a throne. They investigated a ritual chamber in the old academy. But all the records were lost in a fire around 1512. And the knowledge of it was lost in the process as well. So no, I know even less about it than you do. So what actually is this black mirror then? We think it's a kind of portal. And where does it lead? Nobody knows exactly, and it's a dangerous thing to investigate. Mordred tried, but the Black Mirror enslaved them. Pope Innocent III believed it might lead to the destruction of Christianity. What we know for sure is that it's older than anything else on Earth. I thought it might have been built by pagan druids or something like that. It's much, much older than that. The druids used it for ceremonies, yes, but they definitely didn't build it. It's been there since the dawning of time, so they say. Holy crap. So, so what is it then? We can only speculate. The mirror attracts evil, or how should I put it, absorbs it. According to the old druidic scriptures, there were regular human sacrifices. Apparently, the altar table in front of the Black Mirror portal was already drenched in century-old blood back then. The souls of the sacrifices are drawn into the mirror, but only if they're absolutely evil. The soul of a good person cannot enter the mirror. It seems to be something like... Yes. Like... The gateway to hell, perhaps? Yes. And no... Not just the gate, but the mirror too. Glancing into it reveals the innermost self. It reflects the soul for everyone to see. I wonder what the Pope would see if he looked into it. And all the dignitaries of the world. No wonder the entrance has to be guarded. But times have changed. Why don't we just have a look at the thing? Purely scientifically, I mean. Evil can also break out of the mirror. Its effect is unbound. You can feel its power yourself. Who's ever susceptible is enticed into evil. That's why life in the castle is so dangerous. It's right within its sphere. Mordred was... changed. The spark of evil that always smoldered within him was fanned into a blazing fire. He did everything he could to open the portal. Rumors suggest that he almost found the mechanism. Someone's leaving me messages describing the virtues of a guardian. You don't happen to know anything about that, do you? I wrote them. They were tests to see if you could become the next guardian in spite of the curse. I had assumed that apart from Victoria, there was only Angelina. But she was nowhere to be found. There was no time. Victoria lay on her deathbed. She was the last guardian. It had to be settled. When we heard that you were maintaining that you were a Gordon and were also innocent of any crime, then the Vatican changed its plan. We had to assure ourselves that you were still of pure heart. And you passed all the tests. But you weren't there. True. I wasn't there. <sighs> all right, Miss Undercover. I think we still need something here for the sword hill to work. It's not working. You think that's because of the missing gemstone? Could be possible. The question is, where is this stone? Could be anywhere. Could have been lost hundreds of years ago. I don't think so. If the key had been broken for a long time, why did Victoria hide it? No, 
I think the stone is missing intentionally, as an added safeguard. You know what I mean? Yeah, but where should we start looking? Did Victoria give you anything before she died? An heirloom? Jewelry? A signet ring? Not to me, but Angelina. What? Her bracelet. She showed it to me. Yes, I remember well. There were rubies on it, too. Perhaps we need one of them? And where is the bracelet now? The police evidence locker. Then get it. We don't have much time. Strange. It's never been so quiet here before. Adrian! It's done. Case closed. Angelina's letter convinced the judge completely. Some good news. A lot more than that. And is there anything I can do for you? Now with the case closed, all of the pieces of evidence are no longer required, right? In theory, not anymore, no. Then it wouldn't be a problem if I got the bracelet back. You do know that it's a family heirloom. I'll see what I can do. Thanks. Zach! Hmm? Please. How's it looking with your transfer? Now that's lying on my boss's desk. And knowing him like I do, he's gonna let me stew for a while. But it'll come through sooner or later. Goodbye. Fare thee well, my lord. Sunglasses? They've got to be from Edward. Actually, an umbrella would be better right now. But, what the hell? An empty. Someone's broken the door in with an axe by the look of it. Damn! Looks as though Tom has been here. Ugh! God damn it! There are some things you just don't want to see. I'd better get out of here. Rain, rain, go away. Tomorrow will be a rainy day. Damn. Then comes the snow. Don't you know? Well, I, I, I was only playing with him. Well, what happened? Am I hearing voices of the dead? Or was that really Ralph? Oh, 
whole load of photos of my family uh, with a grave candle in front of them. And then what have we got here? A pair of pliers. I'll take those and the candle. I don't need the other stuff right now. One ruby's enough. The ruby fits exactly into the sock. Madam Fortuna. Edri, I knew you would call again. Who else could it be? Pick a card. Uh, stop. I have drawn the death card. Why doesn't that surprise me? Edri, don't worry. Death means that you'll release yourself from all the ties. You'll experience a transformation. Well, that certainly cheered me up. Ah, I see. Death. A lightning bolt. A bolt flashes down on you. Uh... Stop. The death card again. Adrian, the cards are correcting me. I see a deluge which will suffocate you. Oh. Oh, another bad card. Adrian, I see darkness. You will be devoured by darkness. How many death cards have you actually got there? Just one in the major arcana. Oh, I've mixed up several tarot packs. That must have happened. Yesterday. Oh, no. I'm sorry, Adrian. I have to call someone back urgently. There's a spiral staircase here. I can't see how far down it goes. It has to be a good few stories. Ladies first. Are you scared? Or are you exercising your role as lord of the manor? The guardian isn't allowed to die. Those were your words. I'm just playing it safe. That's supposed to be the catacombs? <sighs> Looks like the sewer system. Patience. This is just the beginning. It, huh. The water's been standing there for some time. I reckon that's the remains of the water from putting out the fire. At any rate, it's not normal sewage. There are high... There's a bird and a head chiseled in here. I think that's supposed to be a house or a shack. There's a fish in a hand. A bird relief. Valentina. Yes. Do any of these symbols around us mean anything to you? These symbols look like Pictish glyphs. Obviously an ancient form of writing. More than 6,000 years old. So I'm wondering what business have they got being on these walls? Maybe one of my ancestors thought they looked nice? Do you know what they mean? Sort of. But don't ask me how you vocalize them. I can't see any other exit here. Can you? Hmm. <laughs> Looks like we're in a dead-end street. But it can't be, though. It has to continue somewhere. 
Maybe there's another secret passage. Certainly not out of the question. Keep your eyes open. It is half full of a white salt, probably for when it's icy. I'll take it. So now I've got the option to connect something up down there. I won't be able to see a thing down there. I should get myself some light first. Candle for the dead. A construction light, just like the ones all around the castle, except without any power. Here's the end of the extension. Energy. Valentina? Yes? Valentina, can you hear me? Yes. That's the water pump, which they used to pump away. I'm surprised that thing even works. Hmm. Quite a clear design. The motor's on the right, the pump device is on the left. The two are connected with a long shaft. Must be a seriously heavy water bucket if you need a chance. Hmm. If I wrap the chain around the drive shaft, I could use the water pump as a winch. I hope the motor's powerful enough. The wire rope is wrapped tightly around the pipe. I guess it's an earth for the water pump. I'll put the cable into the connecting terminal on the pump. I think that's the power connection for the water. Oh, that's just one pole. Does this thing use direct current? So that thing on the pipes isn't an earth. It's The power cable is now hanging through the grill and straight into the water. I'll give the pepper and chilies a miss. The puddle seasoned enough. There's a thick electric cable hanging from the roof, just above a puddle of water. Craig was right. It isn't safe down here.
If it weren't for me being a former student of physics, I'd call that kind of action suicide. Now, the end of the cable's hanging directly in the water. I guess that's the main switch for the electricity in the cellar. Who needs fuses if you've got such a big lever? The electricity is on. I should be careful where I step and what I touch. My improvised chain winch. I'm quite proud of it. You can turn the pump on and off with that. You can even adjust the direction of rotation and the speed. Theoretically, I could pump the cellar full of water again, slowly or quickly. I can't wind the chain anymore. Something's blocked. What are you up to? I'm impressed. I'll tie the rope to the column here and let it down the shaft. Well, I'll hand the job over to Edward, of course. I thought I'd pulled the plug out of the bath. Valentina. Yes. What do you think's going on with this cage? I don't think that's a cage in the usual sense. How come? Isn't it a wonderful torture device, especially with the water? Oh, right. So that's your interpretation of a normal cage usage. Don't forget, I'm being possessed by an 800-year-old tyrant I've hung the rope into the well. What are you thinking of doing with the rope? When I pull on it, you turn on the winch up there and let me down. When I'm running out of air down there, I'll pull again and you winch me back up. I think I can manage that. What the heck's it? Good to know. I could lock up unwelcome visitors in here. It really would have been better to have taken a hotel room. Okay, hold your breath. Thank you. 
That was close. It's just getting better and better here. Adrian? Adrian! Is everything all right? Yeah, everything's fine. I'm okay. Just a little touch and go, that's all. Is everything really? Wow. I've never seen anything like this. Isn't that just so impressive? Well, uh, I'm so glad you like my humble wine cellar. Hmm. There's something different about this tablet. There's only one of these reliefs here. A whole load of symbols. Fish, crown, no idea, bone. Looks like a, an offering dish to me. Oops. A stone coffin, I'm thinking. A hole the size of a hand. Hmm, I've got no idea how that works. Looks like some kind of a scale, and it's connected to these chains. Now what should I... What's that? A map? Hmm, yes, it could be a map of this place. What are you doing? I'm opening the coffin. Have you ever heard of rest in peace? What, when there could be something inside that's vital to our mission? <sighs> I just don't think this is right, not one bit. can't get the lid open any further, but it's moved enough to see inside. There's a small boat here. <coughs> Pretty damn dusty. There's not much left of the corpse. There's an arrowhead in here. Still looks pretty good. I'm gonna take that with me. A rusty helmet. Somebody probably lost it.
Now that's what I call a door. Solid stone with iron bands and six locks. Now that's what I call a door. There's a metal capsule hanging between the chain links. Huh. Is that a little door? So it is a door. And inside the capsule, there's a golden key. Or maybe just gilded. There's a weird disc thing lying among the bones. That looks like a round shield a warrior might use. Something's... Hmm. A piece of jewelry, shaped like a fish. There are only a few... Hmm. It seems to continue here. Valentina, you coming? Wait. Yeah? You see that there? Uh, That's Latin. Your ancestors must have written that. And what does it say exactly? A warning. Beware, guardians of the shades. They will take possession of your soul as soon as you venture into the dark. Shades? Is that some kind of metaphor? No, I don't think so. In the Book of Guardians, it's said that Marcus had to battle through an army of shades that his brother had summoned out from the mirror. Makes sense. First Mordred, now Shades. Well, my soul's not gonna get bored, that's for sure. This is one proper labyrinth. Where now? Straight ahead or to the right? Um, did you see that? In the room ahead. What is that? No idea, but it's moving. Is that one of those shades? Whatever it is, we shouldn't get too close to it. Be a good idea to close the door. Huh? How did you know that the switch was the right one? I didn't. That's what you call putting your faith in God. Dust. Or a thief's, one that stole a king's crown.
I need Valentina's help for that. Nothing. Ugh, the whole niche is full of human skulls. Well, not quite. Here's a bowl. Rather nicely decorated. Everywhere.
there's only dust in here. Oh, and a weird-shaped staff. Looks like it could be like the ones that the bishops carry. Or shepherds. I'll wait till... A very strange depiction. What can it mean? Seven people, all a little different. Three people are lying down. Four are standing. I, I don't know all this. At least perhaps each of them. is hanging right in the middle. There's a rusty broken sword lying on the ground here. No idea how that could have got here. Adrian, what have you got there? Regrettable that 
that the passing of time has taken its toll on such a fine weapon. It's no more than a rusty bar of steel. Yet the hilt has lasted well. I will. Adrian. What? What's happening to you? I... I've no idea. I, I must have blacked out. I'm back now. Another gold key. Well, I've got no idea how many of them there are. I really ought to find out what's going on. Looks like all of the capsules have gold keys in them. I've got no idea. Looks like all of the... I've got no idea. Looks like all of the... I've got no idea. Looks like... I've got no idea. Looks like all of... I've got no idea. I'm so close. I'll try it in all the locks. Hmm. Well, the key fits in all the holes, but I'll leave it here. Ah, it fits here. I'm guessing that the keys in the other capsules could well fit, too. The locks are all undone. We ought to be able to open the door now. Walls full of skulls. Who were these dead people, and where are their bones, and why are all the statues? I think we've reached the chapel. I almost feel like I've come home here. No. This chapel was built by Marcus and Mordred. It was their last cooperative work. It really is a sacred place. But Mordred used it for his own dark purposes. I doubt that. There's a whole bunch of hieroglyphics on the altar. There's a sentence in Latin chiseled here. It means, at sunrise, the king sent his warriors into battle against the darkness. Unusual for an altar engraving. Is that any use to us? I don't know. Perhaps. Maybe Valentina. The guy with no highway to hell. That this light reminds me of the the skeleton. Those are Maria's remains. Mordred's wife. How do you know that? That's a female skeleton. And you can see the sword tip in a ribcage. It broke off when Mordred murdered his wife. You're right. A stone. If we were to believe the Book of the Guardians, that was once Mordred. Hey, Mordred, how does it feel to be looking into your own grave? Huh, <laughs> you two are getting closer. Please excuse me. Mordred.
We're definitely not in the catacombs anymore. This looks more like an alchemy laboratory. I've been here before. Mordred? No, no, no. As, as a child. I've got a kind of faint memory of it. Have a look around. Perhaps it'll come back to you more strongly. Yeah. That's it. That's the hole that Angelina fell into as a child. I climbed in after her, but it's blocked up now. No wonder I couldn't find it up on the surface. And how did you two get back out of there? Through the catacombs? No. Bates. Oh, it was him. He got us out and then and then filled in the hole. But before that, we were at the portal. We were standing right in front of it. It's behind this door. Had Angelina opened it? I... I'm not sure anymore. Adrian, you're scaring me. Please, put that away. And yet, they're nothing compared to my sword. <laughs> Adrian, Adrian, stop it! Huh? What? It's all right. Everything's okay. Just put the sword down and then everything will be fine. From now on, we'll have to watch out you don't pick up a sword again, okay? You're not going to go near a sword again, Adrian. Do you understand? We don't want you having an accident or anything, do we? Okay, Sister Valentina. Is there a reason you're talking to me like some kind of wacko? None. Apart from the fact that you look like one, and are behaving like one, your eyes have turned black again, and you're fiddling about with the sword, and you're speaking like Mordred. Now then, please do us both a favor and keep your fingers away from sharp-edged weapons. Valentina. Yes. Are you gonna let me take a look at your dagger? What? No, definitely not. I think I know how to open the door. It's quite simple. All right then. I hope you know what you're doing. <clears throat> what are you doing there? There was a door in the academy. It could only be opened with the blood of a Gordon. <sighs> My blood. When I wanted to help Angelina as a child back then, I would cut myself. That's why I was able to open the door. Gordon blood. One further reason why only you. Can be the guardian. Let me go. Why? I don't know what might happen when Mordred sees his beloved mirror again. Think about that thing with the swords. Okay. Don't touch the mirror, ever! 
Okay, okay. The reflection shows your soul, and the part of Mordred that's within you. Mordred? But why does he look like one of these shades? Mordred's soul is still trapped behind the mirror. What you have in you is the shade of Mordred's soul. We somehow got to send Mordred's soul back into the Black Mirror, and do that without setting it free. Okay, but how then? Haven't we just had an exorcism that went all wrong? No, not an exorcism. We need something else. Are you sure there's nothing in Mordred's book you've overlooked? Yeah, absolutely. I can show it to you if you want. These pages. There's some writing appearing. That must be Mordred's notes. But how come there's something there all of a sudden? The mirror must have activated it, maybe? If you believe my ancestors, it's possible that the soul leaves the mirror if the shade is already bound in this world. A reunion of soul and shade would constitute an unimaginable power potential. The soul belonging to the powerful and feared by all King Armundor is exactly the right one for my son to be made into, and what he would have become if my brother had not blah blah. <laughs> the guy definitely would have benefited from a few sessions with Dr. Winterbottom. Uh, but hold it, there's something else here. Everything is prepared. Amundo's bones lie upon the altar. His shade will soon be bound to them. Nothing more stands in the way of the crossing over of his soul. Now all that has to happen is for the boy to be freed from the yoke of his contaminated soul. Soul transfer. Mordred's soul shade in me. Yes, of course. That's his plan. He's lured me here so that his ritual can be completed and his soul can cross over into my body. That's exactly what the curse has been for. Only Mordred hadn't reckoned with his soul shade landing in a guardian's body. That's the only reason you've held out for so long. But that doesn't help us all that much. If we release this shade that's inside me, Mordred's soul will then enter me. Shh, Adrian. I think I've got an idea. Let me think about it for a minute. Adrian's reflection is a mix of his own soul and Mordred's soul shape. I don't have any... There's... But... What is on the other side? Only Mordred's soul? Or... Adrian, can you read me the section about the shades from the Book of the Guardians, please? The ancients' graves are watched over by their shades. Their fate has been thus for thousands of years now, with no end ever envisaged. They were born in death, and it is death they wish to spread. The ancients force them into our world. Thus, they don't belong here. They can be neither caught nor appeased. However, the light from the green flame unsettles them. It drives them into the darkness. One should not come too close to them there. Their power is old, very old. Hmm. A shade is created in every case when somebody dies. But not in this world, but behind the mirror. Edrin, have another look in Mordred's book. Maybe there's more there now. I did not want him to die. I wanted to save him from his wretched fate. I wanted to make him my son again. My son. No bastard from the loins of my cursed brother. I have kept to the ritual exactly. Everything has worked well. Only I was unable to bring a beat back to his heart. I tried everything, all in vain. From now on, I am quite alone. There is no one whom I can initiate. Marcus has taken everything from me, and now I shall take everything from him. 
I must make haste. My sword. First, I have to conclude the experiment with it. It appears that I have created a shade for it. That could mean that I can use it on the other side. If I succeed in crossing to the other side without dying, then I will rule both sides. Strange as the black stain on the blade, since its contact with the other side, the black is spreading inexorably. Rituals, experiments with a sword. What the hell was Mordred doing here? It sounds like he was trying out an ancient druidic soul transfer ritual on his own son. A soul transfer? He simply murdered him. Does it give the procedure for the ritual in the book by any chance? No. Adrian's shade needs a weapon to conquer Mordred, but I'm afraid that an ordinary blade isn't going to do the job. Mordred's already dead, and you can't pass a weapon through the mirror just like that. Wait, Adrian, what was that just now in Mordred's book about his sword? It says, um, <clears throat> strange is the black stain on the blade since its contact with the other side the black is spreading inexorably. In here, it appears that I have created a shade for it. That could mean that I could use it on the other side. That's it. We need Mordred's sword. Can't be all that difficult. Find a sword with a black stain. Hmm. I could give Adrian something to really slow his heartbeat down. Like a poison. Then... That would have to free Mordred's soul from Adrian's body. But then, Adrian's soul would be freed as well. And he'd die. It could be possible to resuscitate him with a drain. I will only have to give him a small shot into a vein soon after. At that time, Mordred wasn't in a position to do that. Nobody knew about adrenaline back then. Today, it's possible. It's dangerous, for sure, but it's the only possibility I can see right I'd better not say anything about it to Adrian, for now. The book is open at the Homunculus chapter. Is that a coincidence, or was Mordred busy creating an artificial life? Strange. Interesting stone masonry. The faces are supported by hands. Hmm, could represent a scepter. They must have the Tabula Smardina here, the fundamental text for alchemy. Ico, here it is. The Smardina tablet, the alchemist's bond. But I'd better not touch the book. It would fall apart at the smallest touch, like nearly everything here. Even more cupels in... I know from the Vatican files that there were human sacrifices here in order to see if their souls were good or evil. The same sort of idea as witch burning. Mordred wrote that a soul could leave the mirror if its shade was already bound here, which is exactly the case here now. So, if Adrian were to die here, then Mordred would win. Adrian's soul would have been freed from eternity and his body would take on Mordred's soul. But we have to get Mordred's soul shade out of Adrian one way or another. 
we absolutely have to make sure Mordred's actual soul can't leave the mirror. And Adrian's soul has to stay where it is. Sounds right. This altar. And I don't feel any revulsion. No, I have to pull myself together. I'm able to see in my mind. And I don't know. I have... I could give them, but it could at that it's I'd better not say a stove. The shaft once let outside, so there was a shortcut then. Hmm, that's not ordinary soil. Looks like there is tar mixed in with it. Somebody wanted to be sure. Mordred's remains. Hmm. According to Mordred, he used the bones of the dead to bring their shades into this world and then keep them here. So, we could lure Mordred's shade out of Adrian by using his bones. Just like he once did with that king. Adrian, we need Mordred's bones for the ritual. Can you do that? Uh, yeah. In one piece? Just remember how they all go together, and then lay them on the altar in the same layout. Okay, I think I know how we're going to do this. I can't wait. Right. The Black Mirror seems to be a portal into another world. A kind of shade world. If a human dies anywhere near the portal, then a shade is born on the other side of the mirror. At the same time, there are two possibilities for that person's soul. If they were of pure heart, their soul shade remains behind the black mirror, and their soul... Fly shade free up to heaven? It's free, yes, but if that person was evil, then their soul is sucked from their shade into the mirror. And then? It's trapped. The souls in the mirror are slaves to the shades. They can become their instruments to be exploited. Oh, that means that the Shades are only evil if their soul was, too. Marcus was supposed to have battled his way through an army of Shades before he killed his brother. Mordred has found out how to bring Shades through the portal. Okay, but Mordred's Shade is already out. You can see that clearly from my reflection. Correct. Therefore, his soul is more or less defenseless and alone behind the mirror and is just waiting until it can come through. And that might happen if I touch the mirror. Is that it? That, uh... We don't want to find out. Therefore, we can bind Mordred's shade to his mortal remains. Doing that stops the shade from getting in our way, at least. And then your shade, Adrian, can take over Mordred's soul. Or even better, destroy it. Uh, my shade? I thought a shade only comes into being when somebody dies. You do have to die. Okay. And why didn't you let me jump from the roof then? That would have been more comfortable. Then you would be irretrievably dead. Adrian, I will resuscitate you. If your body shuts down for a few minutes, your soul will... How can I say this? Be free. I know there are plenty of near-death experience reports, which confirm this. A soul shade will generate simultaneously on the other side of the mirror. Won't that cause some kind of brain damage? Don't worry, Adrian. The human brain can get by for a few minutes without the heartbeat. Your soul will return to your body just as soon as you have a heartbeat again. It's not the first time I've come across this. Near-death experiences are usually what has happened when people believe that God has spoken to them. Okay, and then? Is my soul shade supposed to strangle Mordred? No. 
We know that Mordred has made the sword usable on the other side. To put it better, the soul-like mirror reflection. You'll take it to the other side and be able to kill Mordred's soul with it. Shades are stronger there than they are here. Have I got this right? Souls are strong here and the soul shades are weak? Exactly. And the other way around, too. Which means that Mordred's soul is very weak on the other side. Well, that sounds like there's some absurd logic to it. And what's the story with Mordred's shade, then? We'll keep it outside the mirror using the bones, so that it can't cross over to defend his soul. After that, the same thing ought to happen to the shade that happens to a soul when the body dies. It'll go back into the mirror. But there would still be a problem. Yeah? You need Mordred's sword and a part from the broken dip. I don't know where that is. Hmm. In the book, there was something about a blackness that came out from the sword, spreading itself even further. Of course. That's why Greg and Steve had problems with that. The tea room, the fungus... There was a constant problem there with the damage, apparently, coming from the extinguishing water after the fire. Then the sword has to be there. I'll go and get Stop. it. Stop. You're not going to lay a hand on any kind of sword, and especially not one of Mordred's. I'll get it. I need to get the book from the library anyway. One about poisons. These down here are somewhat out of date. And what am I supposed to do in the meantime? You could lay out Mordred's skeleton on the altar. See you soon. I can never remember the arrangement of the bones. I hardly ever paid attention in biology. can never remember. There are just too few pictures of you, Mordred. I hope that's not going to upset Mordred's soul shade. I'll put the bones down first, so it's easier to sort them. A photo of Mordred's room. Right.
Yep, that looks right. Now I just have to wait for Valentina. With a little imagination, you can see the fungus mark is in the shape of a sword. <sighs> that has to be the right place. The wall's only being held together by wallpaper. The rest of it is totally rotten. With <sighs> the wall's only being held together by wallpaper. The rest. Ones. I still need a book about poisons from the library. After that, I'll go back to Adrian. Hopefully he was able to put Mordred's skeleton back together. I've got the sword. Have you done it? Mordred's skeletons lying ready on the altar. Good. Are the bones lying like they were before? Head at the top, legs at the bottom. I reckon so. Have we got everything we need? Looks like it. The... poison's ready as well. Is it... gonna hurt? Probably not. It paralyzes the heart muscle, but don't worry. I've got a syringe full of adrenaline here to bring you back to the land of the living. Sounds like one of Phil's torture experiments, with me taking the Ralph role. It'll be okay, Darren. Put your trust in God. Now, I'm going to get the poison, and then we can get started. Poison. It slows down the circulation and then the heart stops. Pain free. I've had to do this all rather quickly, unfortunately. But the books in the library say it ought to work. Good. You have to drink this. Wait, if I don't manage to finish off Mordred, what happens then? You have to win. It's your only chance. If you don't manage it, he'll kill you and his soul will take over your body. How are you going to know if I've done it? What I mean is, when will you resuscitate me? I'm going to have to give you the adrenaline within five minutes, at the latest, or else you'll die. Adrian. You have to do it. All right. Valentina? Yes. See you later. Yes. See you later, Adrian. Something's not right. Oh god, that's... Mordred's soul. And that isn't Adrian's soul shade.
I think he's done it. I need to get him back quickly, or else he'll be gone forever. Oh no, it's not working. Adrian! Adrian, come back! <gasps> Thank God, you're alive. What? What happened? I feel sort of... different. You've beaten Mordred, and the curse along with him. You've done it. Really? The curse is finally broken? Yes. The last of the Gordons has done it. Let's get out of this place and never come back.
getting on? Pretty well, I think. I'm done with the main points. Now I just have to get everything across into the Book of the Guardians. Do you want to have a look for yourself? If I may. Here, uh, I'm not sure about this last point. That's already a good beginning. When are you going to put it into the Book of the Guardians? Not before I eat. <laughs> anyway, now I know what all those black balls were about. I can't wait. Mordred writes in his book that he had carried out a soul transfer ritual. But instead of all the bones, he had only used the skull and one black ball. The shade didn't go back into the mirror anymore after that, but always stayed close by the ball. Ah. Uh then you can trap souls with these balls as well. To all intents and purposes, they can be thought of as the body, right? It gets better. Here, um, with the help of the soul trapped in the ball, one can, to a certain extent, control the shade. He writes that he put a ball in his brother's bedchamber, under the bed, in the hope that the shade would rob his soul in the night. But that didn't work. He suggests that Marcus's soul was too pure for the shade. What do you think? Do you think there are still shades going around today, doing all their evil stuff? I don't know. But if there are, then it's your job to stop them. 